Hey guys, Owen here with SCI, and I'm joined here with Jason. Jason, how are you doing today? I'm awesome, man. It's been an amazing week, I'll tell you. Tell me a little bit about your you and your company that you're here with. Okay, so uh, I was a stay-at-home dad for eight years. Firearms has always been my passion. Yeah. And uh, when it came time, my kids got old enough that I could get back into the workforce. I could either go back into my old field or I could try something new. Yeah. And I've with my passion for firearms, I really wanted to be a gunsmith. So that's how I found SDI. I actually found him by a YouTube sponsorship. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I took the dive. I signed up, and now I graduated, and now I'm a gunsmith, and it's fantastic. When you're making that decision about going to a new school or even tr uh, switching trades, mm -hmm. walk me through what was going through your mind when you were like, should I do this? Should I not do this? Okay, so I used to be an engineer. Yeah. Um, but it was a very specific field of engineering. Yeah. And where I live in Florida, uh, there wasn't a lot of job opportunity. Also, I liked my job. I yeah. liked it. But I love firearms. Like, there's a difference. You know, all my free time, I'm messing with firearms, shooting firearms, cleaning firearms. Like, that's my passion. Yeah. So I had to ask myself, you know, do I want to go back to engineering where I know I can get a job and I know what the wage will be, but I'm going to wake up every day and be like, okay, it's time to go to work. Yeah. Or do I want to take a little bit of a risk, try something new, and wake up every day and say, yeah, it's time for work. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what it is right now. So gotcha. It's well, awesome. Walk me through the deciding factor to actually enroll at SDI. Oh, though. at SDI? Yeah. Okay. So when I first heard of SDI, well, so there are gunsmithing schools yeah. in person around the country. But I've got three kids. They're young. Okay. I can't go to Lassen or you know any of these schools that are way out of state. There's none near me in Florida. And you know I'd heard of SDI and the fact that it's an accredited college. And I did some research on it. And after hearing, watching reviews from students. Yeah. Like don't you know. Of course, there's two sides. You know, you've got the haters and you've got the people that support it. I listened to students. Yeah. And all the student alumni videos I watched said it was awesome. Yeah. Do it. They learned so much. It changed their life. So that's what made me want to do it. And I'm glad I did. It's funny you mention that because so many of my interactions have been the same. When I was thinking about enrolling at SDI, I did almost two and a half months of research on it because I was like, I'd already been through college. I, I had a good networking engineering job. I was I was happy with, like you said, like, all right, well, it's time for work. But I wanted to change it up. And so I did tons of research. And this was a couple years back now. Mm -hmm. And I went to actual alumni. And I talked to them. I read what they put online. I didn't I didn't go and just read all the bad reviews, you right. know. Being online, that was the biggest determining factor for me, and I was so worried about it. I was like, ah, this is online, like, how is this going to work? So during that research window is when I really found out about the, uh, the labs and all the tools yep. that are sent out all and the, the parts. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And being that it's online, did you have any sort of worry when it came to it, being online versus being in-house? So, I mean... Of course, I thought, well, you know, this is online. Is Am I going to get the same experience, experience as yeah. I would with an in-person class? And it's a little different, but there's enough hands-on work, uh, labs and, and projects, that in the end, I, I don't know, I, it, it, I didn't really see much difference. Obviously, you can't get your hands on a lathe. Yeah. So I had to do that separately. Yeah. You know, if you want to do machine shop stuff and you, you want to do machining and milling and lathe stuff, you learn about all that stuff. Yeah. But I'll tell you, the class I took at SDI on machining enabled me when I walked into that machine shop with that master gunsmith, I hit the ground running. It's yeah. like, oh, you know this already? Oh, you know that already? And by the end of my first day, I had threaded a barrel tenon. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's and wild. That, I wouldn't have been able to do that if not for all the knowledge I gained at SDI. Yeah. yeah. You just mentioned the master gunsmith, and, and he was showing you around his shop and stuff. Mm -hmm. Walk me through how you ran into him and, oh, okay. and met up with him. So, I live in Florida. Yeah. And nearby to me is a master gunsmith named Gordy Gritters. He is a... Just everybody in the precision rifle shooting scene oh, wow. knows about him. Okay. Like he makes competition rifles, and uh, 
from soup to nuts, barrel blank to completed rifle, thousand yard bench rest. I mean, he's yeah. considered one of the best in the industry. Yeah. So I had heard about him on YouTube, I think. Yeah. I looked him up and he turns out he taught both uh, group classes and one-on-one -on -one classes. And you know, that's how I found out about him on the internet. Okay. But you know, that's not, one-on-one -on -one time with a master gunsmith when you're paying for it isn't cheap. No. But because of SDI, I only had to spend a little bit of time with him and I was like ready to be on my own practicing, practicing for the machine shop stuff. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. So yeah, if it wasn't for SDI, I don't know if I'd have a machine shop right now because I would, it would have been too much of a money and time investment with the gunsmith to get going from the ground up. Yeah. So I owed it to SDI. Yeah. It's so with that transition and going to the actual machine shop mm -hmm. and learning that aspect, yep. you've graduated now. What are you doing now? I'm a gunsmith. I own my own gunsmith shop in Orlando, and I am slammed yeah. with work. I yeah. mean, I'm here at SHOT Show. I woke up this morning because we're three <laughs> hours behind. Yeah. I had voicemails. I was returning calls this morning. I mean, I have customers calling me every day. Hey, yeah. I need help. Hey, I need help. There just, just aren't a lot of gunsmiths out there. Yeah. When I opened my gunsmith shop, the ATF came to inspect for my federal firearms license, and he said, you're the only gunsmith in like a hundred miles. Yeah. So there is a need for this trade. And if you love firearms, I mean, it's a no brainer. I've talked to several grads that are, have their own gun stores now, and they are literally turning away work. They're, yeah. they're, and it allows them to be choosy with the projects they have. One, maybe it's out of their capability or two, it's, it's something that is just going to take too much time. And a ton of our grads are so busy yeah, with, with I, the amount of work. Can I touch on that out of your capability? Thing? Yeah. One of the things I was really worried about when I opened my shop is my capability. Yeah. Can I do this job? And let me tell you, the number one job I do is a detail cleaning. Yeah. I have so much just detail cleaning business, and anybody can do that. Yeah. And with the stuff you get at SDI, it's like no brainer. It's I mean, one it's of the first courses first you thing go. They yeah. Teach you. Yeah. And you know you can charge. $85 for a detail cleaning. It takes you, especially if you buy a little ultrasonic cleaner, maybe 40 minutes, not even 30 minutes of your time. You knock it yeah. out, re oil and lube, reassemble, and that's money in your pocket. And then if you want to add stuff to your shop, like a machine shop or refinishing, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can add, learn and do that on the side and add that. And, and the fact that SDI gives you all the overarching knowledge you need on all the aspects of gunsmithing you know where to start you know what your interests are from the classes and you can start adding services over time yeah so yeah there's that fear of like can i do this anybody can do it you, you mentioned these different services that you can provide mm -hmm. walk me through for newer gunsmiths or some of our uh, viewers that are are just graduating yep. walk me through the adding of the services and expanding okay. your catalog absolutely so when i started I did detail cleanings yeah. and just general inspections, safety inspections. Yeah. And so someone would have a gun, it would be their grandfather's from, I don't know, 80 years ago, yeah. and they'd want to know if it's safe to shoot. Yeah. Well, that's something anybody can do. You don't need specialized equipment. You can just use the tools SDI sends you. And Literally. You make, yeah, seriously, you don't need anything else. Yeah. You just need a workbench. That's the only thing they don't send you yeah. for, the, for these jobs. So that's what got money coming in the door, so I then could focus on adding other services. So yeah. then I thought about what my passion was when it came to firearms, and I really love restoring old firearms. Yeah. Or making beat up, sad firearms, like, Alive again. Beautiful again, usable, yeah. alive again. So I looked into finishing options, I looked into conservation. Yeah. So I started doing research on refinishing, and then I found for a lot of these subjects, there's like little like correspondence things you can do. Like for example, Caswell Plating, I don't want to promote anybody, has a refinishing thing you can yeah. do where they have like nickel plating, yeah. like if you want to get into nickel plating. You take their little online course, it's like 60 bucks. You buy a little kit, you practice, practice on me, buy some gun gunsmith special firearms yeah. at a pawn shop. I mean, that's how I get like dirt cheap firearms, practice, and then you can add that service to your shop once you're confident with it. The machining obviously requires a little more investment. Of course. Um, but it's a real money maker because machine shop time is pretty well built time. You know, you can bill a lot for machine shop time. So that requires a little more investment. Yeah. You don't need to do that. I, that's Find your passion in gunsmithing and just add those services that you love. You know, yeah, I really like what you said about 
starting small because one of the biggest things, even for myself, is building that confidence. Mm -hmm. The more you do it, it you, you start with the basics, cleaning, safety checks, uh, and, it, and all these other small, simple things with the tools that are literally provided for you. You start building that confidence to start getting out of your comfort zone and working on other things. Zeroing optics. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I that's those are my top like my two, top two jobs are detail cleaning, and then, hey, can you mount and zero this optic for me? Well, that's something that you can do. You don't have to worry about sending an unsafe gun out the door. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, mounting, and you can, I mean, you can charge a good amount of money for mounting, foresighting, and then zeroing, or just do mounting and foresighting. You can offer all those options to your customer, and I'm telling you, you will get income yeah. just with those few services. And if you wanted to just stay with those services, you could. You could. Because there's just nobody else out there providing those services. Yeah. I mean, for a gun, for someone thinking about going to SDI, you know, they're usually real passionate about firearms. Yeah. So they're like, no one's going to need me to zero their red dot, yeah. but that's not true. Yeah. 90 to 95% of gun owners, they don't know how to zero red dot. Yeah. They just want to bring it to someone, and they know when they pull the trigger, the projectile goes where they aim. Yeah. Can you make that happen, sir? Yeah. I can make that happen. Here you go. Yeah. That's how. It, that's the majority of gun owners out there. Yeah. And that's not looking down on gun owners. No. They have their own passions and hobbies and jobs. They might just use it for defense. But, you know, look, if you're looking at SDI, you're not the average gun owner no, that just not. has a gun by their bedside. You yeah. have a passion for firearms. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. This has been a fantastic conversation. It was awesome. I'm so happy to finally meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Tell our viewers how they can find out more about Sawgrass. Oh, okay. So I'm in Orlando, Florida. Uh, my website is sawgrassarmament.com. Uh, my phone number is 689-208-2888. I accept phone calls all hours of the day. If you have a fi even a firearms question, give me a call. I love talking about guns. Thanks. <laughs> and just to close, what piece of advice would you give to anybody that is on the fence about enrolling at SDI? Don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to the opinions of people who didn't attend SDI because they don't they don't know. They 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 think you can watch a YouTube video and you're going to learn the same thing you learn in SDI. It's not true. Look to the alumni, look to the people who have done the program and ask their opinions yep. because they've lived it. You know, I, I can give my opinion on anything, but that doesn't mean that there's any validity to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't believe the haters. Don't be there, because I'm living proof. It's, yeah. it's not true. You know what I mean? Like, SDI, you can be a gunsmith by attending SDI. Awesome, Jason. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Owen. It was a pleasure. Yep.